Zolanguela o Veteronugo, a Rua Itabua, a Guido Talitaina na Barrongo e na Bula FM, na Mandoa na Serre. Bula! A Langonoa, e Lutoca, do Talitaca na Bula FM, vai ter na Mandoa na Serre. Nem Bula Vinaca, na Regengo, a Bula FM na. É na casa. Nós vamos gostar muito. Aqui vem o nome Bula FM, nome do NSR no sul. Nem Bula vem na cá. Nós vamos gostar Jerry, é o meu lampasa. O do Barronga é na Bula FM, nome do A. Bula FM, nome do A NSR. In the news tonight, Fijians in Australia told about investment opportunities. Trade tensions could affect Fijian economy. FRA explains proposed work on Queen Elizabeth Drive. From the studios of FBC Suha, Amrita Saga. Now is the time to invest. This was the statement made by Prime Minister Vorenga Mbani Marama while speaking to the Fijian community in Sydney, Australia last night. Mbani Marama informed those president, present that investment opportunities in Fiji are something not to be missed. Ali Kimbia with the story. With a record years of economic growth, Mbani Murama says Fijian businessmen and women in Sydney and abroad should take advantage of the vast areas of expanding their business in a consistent economy. The point is, if you ever uh, had an idea for a business, uh, Fijian business uh, swelling in your head, uh, friends, now is the time to come home. And my delegation is fully equipped to walk you through exactly how to take advantage of these historic levels of opportunity. Bani Marama says government will ensure that investors get the reward and benefits they deserve if they decide to invest in Fiji. The Australian markets uh, have dramatically opened on the back of similar advancements and any experience in that regard will be invaluable in a rapidly modernizing Fijian marketplace. And this is all in addition to our low corporate and personal tax regimes. With people coming out in numbers to the Talanoa session, a lot of them have gained the trust of investing without hesitation. We had a clear election and uh, we had the Prime Minister doing a fine job and they kept on improving. It wasn't for the hard work uh, that uh, this government has shown um, and the resilience uh, uh, in the economy, uh, I don't think we would be uh, interested. What I have seen, um, Fiji has progressed. Fiji is open for business. Um, I always talk to people in Australia to invest in Fiji. The Prime Minister says the government will continue to pursue investment opportunities that will impact all Fijians. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. Fijian government, together with the Republic of Fiji military forces, have been praised by the Australian Defence Force. Prime Minister Varenga Marama received a warm welcome during his visit to HMS Adelaide today, where the Australian Army thanked the RFMF for its continuous collaboration. Ali Kimbia, fastest report from Sydney. The Australian Defence Force has today thanked the Fijian government and the RFMF for their efforts in sharing their knowledge with the Australian Army. Both Australia and Fiji have a great tradition of, uh, of peacekeeping operations. You have a lot uh, to teach us from your deep experience in the Middle East. Lebanon, Egypt, the Sinai, these are lessons that, uh, that we are pretty keen to learn from you. For Prime Minister Burengi Mbaini Marama, his visit to the vessel was a trip down memory lane. He says Fiji will continue to work with Australia to maintain security in the region. Last time I stood on the deck here was uh, back in 2016, when I thanked the troops for assisting the Fijians in the aftermath of uh, Cyclone Winston. And again, I want to thank you for continued uh, relationship that we have had in the last uh, decade or so. Uh, our Vuvale relationship, I hope, will, I know, will continue. Defence Minister Inyesiri Ratu says Fiji will not hesitate to further pursue opportunities that aims to maintain global peace. And uh, we have roles to play uh, in the region and of course uh, in terms of uh, global peace as well. Uh, our contributions, both Fiji and uh, Australia, to global peace uh, has been consistent over the years. Prime Minister's visit to the HMS Adelaide today signifies the significance of the Wubale partnership, which is expected to be signed by him and his Australian counterpart Scott Morrison on Monday. Reporting in Sydney, Ali Kimbia, FBC News.
Fijian economy is on track for another year of growth, but this can be affected by some external factors beyond control. Economy Minister Ayaz Said Kanyu believes the trade war between the United States of America and China will definitely have an impact on our economy. On the other hand, he says there are ways to buffer the effects of the downward trend of the world economy. Catherine Krishna reports. While the Fijian economy will be slightly affected by the ongoing trade tensions, the situation shouldn't be taken out of context to spread misinformation, says Economy Minister Ayase Kayum. A 25% tariff has been imposed by the USA on Chinese products and they in turn are retaliating. The USA said if you retaliate any more, we'll put on another 5% tariff. It does have an impact, of course, on overall global confidence. Said Kayum clarified, as of now, the economy has been doing well, as predicted. Indeed, some of the challenges that we as a country will face, given what is happening globally, which is outside our own control. Uh, as of today, uh, for example, the, uh, our liquidity stood at $640 million. Our foreign reserves is at $2.2 million. So in that respect, we are doing well. The International Monetary Fund and World Bank had earlier predicted a general slowing down of the global market, but this is expected to further downgrade due to global issues. Catherine Krishna, FBC News. The South Pacific Stock Exchange held its annual awards in Suva last night. Chair Nurbanu Ali thanked the government for providing ongoing financial support, which has helped in their development. The chair says the awards night is an opportunity for them to recognize companies listed, and they anticipate more listing by next year. Market capitalization on a year-to-date average now stands at 3.5 billion. We are also anticipating further three listings to be accomplished by mid next year, and look forward to that. Residents living in Nasese Suva were today briefed about the proposed upgrade of approximately 2.9 kilometers of Queen Elizabeth Drive. The residents and property owners also used the public consultation as an opportunity to raise any concerns and misunderstandings they had on the proposed upgrade. Apenisa Wain Randovu reports the work will begin by the end of this month. The $2 million projects include the construction of car parks, the extension of the Nasese Bridge, the creation of runabout, upgrading of roads and footpaths. Uh, the actual roadworks in that section won't start probably until later this, until later this year. Then when we finish the, zone, the, the middle zone between Vuya and Manukau, we then move on to the section between uh, Ratasakuna and Vuya, complete that piece of work, and that will probably be from early next year to towards the end of next year. And the final section will be from Manukau down to the Lala Bay Road, which will take for the remainder of the two-year contract. A resident living along Queen Elizabeth Drive for 22 years believes advance notice should have been given for the consultation. The consultation went very well. Michael presented it very well. But uh, a little concern was we were given only two days notice before the consultation. But I think the questions on the floor today were very relevant to the property owners along Queen Elizabeth Drive. Property owners were also given clarification that their boundaries will not be affected during the upgrade. We can narrow our lanes, we can narrow the footpath, we can narrow everything up so we can shrink it as much as possible so that there really will be minimal if any impact on any, any property. That's, what, that's, our, that's our aim. China Railway 5th Group has been awarded the tender for the project and FRA says no changes will be made to the speed limit along Queen Elizabeth Drive and it will remain at 50 kilometers per hour. Apenisa Wangardobu, FBC News. Up ahead of a $23,000 raised during Save or Shave campaign. And issues ironed out during Bar Provincial's AGM details after the break. Hi, Bula. I'm CLI from Nandi. I love Gold FM. Only the classic hits. Hi, my name is uh, Sotiana here in Bar. We love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. Bula, I'm Miri. I'm from Lotoka and I love Gold FM because they play all my classic hits. Hi, my name is Fiona from Tavua and I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. Hi, I'm Ini from Rakiraki. I love Gold FM, only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits.
Over 3,000 cane farmers in Vanwalevu will be sharing $556,372 as part of their transport allowance subsidy for the 2018 season. The subsidy was given to the Fiji Sugar Corporation by the Lambasa Cane Producers in Lambasa yesterday afternoon. Eleanor Turangaevu reports. Under the transport allowance subsidy, farmers get $1 for every tonne of cane. For this subsidy payout, over 3,000 cane farmers in Lambasa and Senganga will receive a share of the $556,372 for the 2018 season. The benefit I'm uh, receiving from the LCPA is, is uh, great and uh, really helpful for the farmers. The Lambasa Cane Producers Association designed this scheme to help farmers as transportation of cane is always an expensive exercise. What has been achieved, I think, uh, you know, the other association has never done it. So it's, it's, I must thank the Lambasa Cane Producers Association. FSC Chief Financial Officer Manoj Ram says the farmers will get their share of the subsidy next week. I can assure you the farmers are going to get into their bank account before Friday this week. This is only the second subsidy distribution since the scheme was initiated in 2018. Eleanor View, FBC News. The death of Chochi Katsuki has been classified as a suicide following a post-mortem examination. 24-year-old Katsuki was wanted for questioning in relation to the murder of a 19-year-old woman last week. His body was discovered a few meters away from his home at Nambitu Settlement in Singatoka on Thursday. Police say the investigation into the murder, however, will continue before a decision will be made by the divisional crime officer on the next cause of action. Whilst Kids Fiji raised more than $23,600 in its Save or Shave It campaign today, one of the candidates among the four registered for the campaign was 15-year-old Iosefa Maimba, who has a heart-touching story. Koroi Tandulala reports. While many 15-year-olds are busy with their peers or taking part in fun activities, Iosefa Maimba took time out to support the WAS Foundation in memory of his grandparents who died from cancer. A lot of my uh, family members also died of cancer. Uh, my grandpa died from prostate cancer. Uh, my dad's mom uh, from breast cancer. So it was just uh, you know, a way to support people like family members so that uh, they don't have to go through the same thing. It was also an emotional moment for Dr. Adam Wadziri today as she shaved her head in support for kids with cancer in Fiji and the Pacific. I guess this whole, this whole process and this whole opportunity was just a beautiful way of like strengthening our community. NFP parliamentarian Nora Gerengeritambo was also part of the campaign and raised over $11,000 saving her iconic Buininga. But for children it's even worse because they don't understand. You know you can try and explain as much as you can to them but they don't understand why they're going through the pain. And my mother-in-law passed away from, from lung cancer many years ago but uh, you know it's, it's an unfair disease um, but all we can do, those of us who can, have to do as much as we can to support as many people as we can. More than 100 people took part in the event at Albert Park today, showing the support for the WOWS Kids Foundation. Kore Tandulala, FBC News. The Bar Provincial Holdings Company Limited ironed out a number of issues during its annual general meeting in Lotoka yesterday. The shareholders also urged the executives at the AGM to keep everyone well informed about the company's status and the investments being undertaken. Philippe Naikaso has more. <laughs> Shareholders and other members of Bar Provincial Holdings Company Limited were yesterday reminded to understand the company's structure and setup. We continue to emphasize the understanding, the understanding of figures and data eh, that are being uh, produced in our operation. Eh? The, the need to understand the depth of that. And that should. Uh, provide a very satisfactory position for each of one of them. Luke Ratubuki says the shareholders have also requested that crucial information regarding the company be shared with villagers who are critical for the company. We haven't gone 50% yet to fully satisfy government's uh, uh, placements throughout the province. We need, still need a lot of uh, 
building quarters, for instance, is uh, crucial. It's very crucial. That was one. Then, uh, apart from that, uh, facilitation in the commercialization of uh, the use, utilization of land on agriculture. The executives have been reminded to make decisions for the benefit of not only the shareholders, but the provinces that fall under Bar Provincial as well. Philip and Icaso, FBC News. Ten students have been recognized by the New Zealand High Commission for raising concerns on climate change. The students participated in the New Zealand Fiji 2019 Secondary Schools Essay Competition. New Zealand High Commissioner to Fiji, Jonathan Kerr, says climate change is a growing concern and they aim to raise awareness on it through such initiatives. Kerr says NZ will always support Fiji in providing possible avenues for discussions on climate change. And students were asked to write about climate change, write about the impacts of climate change on, on their lives um, and talk about the things that we could do to prevent climate change uh, from happening or to uh, stop the impacts of climate change affecting our lives. Zenganga Central College student Selai Rarakai and Seremaya Naisua from Xavier College at the Supreme Award winners of the competition. Ahead in sports, flight Fijians arrived in Abashiri, Japan. And Fiji 7's team to depart for Oktoberfest 7th tomorrow. This and more coming up. Hi, I'm Shamiza. And I'm Salma. We're from Nandi and we love Michi FM because it's fun. My name is Rajni Taleta and I'm from Vatulaloba. Uh, and we listen to Mirchi FM because it's hot. Hi, my name is Vinita. I'm from Lambasa. I love li listening to Mirchi FM. It's number one. My name is Sagar Reddy. We are in school, we are in the house, and we are in the house of Mirchi FM. We are in the house of Mirchi FM. Dago Mama. Mirchi FM, it's hot. Fiji Airways flying Fijians have arrived at their base camp for the Rugby World Cup in Abashiri City, Japan. The team was officially welcomed by the Mayor of Abashiri and Fijian fans as they will be hosting our boys ahead of its first game against the Wallabies. Savewanga has more. With just five days remaining for the much-awaited Rugby World Cup, the flying Fijians have landed in Abashiri for final preparations. Travel yesterday, but today it was um, back to training. You know, beautiful uh, conditions here, a little bit cooler than than down south. They're, they're nice and sunny and um, really pristine training field to, to train on. So really made the boys uh, very motivated for training today. Coach John McKee says, as game day edges closer, the objective now is to brush up on their game plan that could catch the Wallabies by surprise. Planning our day tomorrow and another another day's training tomorrow morning. Um, Quite a, quite a physical training session tomorrow, you know, some hard work tomorrow the boys will, will go through before, before having some, you know, some of the requirements around Rugby World Cup tomorrow afternoon around um, some integrity briefing. Well, Rugby Development Officer David Carrigy thanked the new players at the welcoming ceremony for their hard work and sacrifice. This is your opportunity to shine on rugby's greatest stage. Rugby World Cup selection is special and I know that you will represent your nation, families and sport with pride, integrity and dignity. Fiji and Australia have met 21 times and out of these clashes, Fiji has come out victorious only twice. The Flying Fijians will take on the Wallabies next Saturday at 4.45pm at the Sapporo Dome in Japan. Save Wanga, FBC Sports. Fiji Airways men's national sevens team will depart on Monday for the October 5th sevens that will be held in Germany. Coach Gareth Baber says this is an important tournament for them as they will be testing their combinations. Baber adds the young players in the side have shown great work ethic. Um, we always felt and there's been a progression to uh, create depth in the squad and keep consistency in what we can put on the field when it really matters for us. And uh, there's some players that have been developing and show potential of playing at that level, and some others who have been in with us, and some guys who are brand new as well, and uh, have been playing in sevens tournaments, uh, and/or have been uh, looking at in fifteens tournaments here domestically, uh, to see that talent come through. And it's good to have them come from two or three different 
as we call, we term it pathways. So two or three different uh, mechanisms, if you like, for them to come into the squad, and that's down to uh, to, to them as individuals. And obviously now they get a, a chance to put that uh, going to Germany in September with a view that um, they stake a claim for a future position in the squad. Fiji is in Group B with Germany, France and USA. The October 5th 7th will begin from the 22nd of next month in Munich. The Roosters are the first team through to the prelimi preliminary finals of the NRL after thrashing the Rabbitohs 30-6 to last night in Sydney. The Roosters scored five tries in the first half of the game to race out to an early lead. The Storm are currently playing the Raiders while the Sharks meet the Sea Eagles at 9.50. Tomorrow, Mike Acevo and the Eels will take on the Sea Eagles at 6.05 p.m. The Bath football side has defeated Lotoka three goals to nil in the last round of the Vodafone Premier League in Bar. Mike Atomi, Shanil Narayan and Paul Mbuke scored for Bar. Lotoka was down to nine players after Dave Rangangai was red-carded in the 30th minute, followed by John Evesikula, who was sent off in the second half following his second yellow card. Well, in other games, Tavua defeated Rewa one goal to nil. And looking at last night's matches, Lambasa defeated Nandi three goals to two at Prince Charles Park. Tomorrow, Suva will take on Nasinu at 3 p.m. in Ratudakambao Park in Nosori. Ticket sales for the Prime Minister's 13 match, Fiji and Australia, has begun. Fiji National Rugby League Acting Chief Executive Don Natambe says early bird tickets are cheap. He adds supporters should take advantage of this opportunity as prices will increase on game day. Early bird prices, $20 uh, for Green's team and $5 at the embankment. And these uh, early bird prices expires uh, a week on the, on the event week on the 6th of um, no, October. And uh, so you don't want to miss out the chance and I encourage all the, the, the public to come on. Fiji Prime Minister's 13's team will take on the Australian Prime Minister's 13 on the 11th of next month at Suva's ANZ Stadium. Spain has defeated Australia 95-88 to in the second period of overtime in the first semi-final of the FIBA Basketball World Cup in China. Australia led the game throughout, but it was Spain who came firing late in the game to force an overtime. In the second semi-final, Argentina defeated France 66-80. to Spain will now meet Argentina in the FIBA Basketball World Cup final on Monday. Cloudy periods with some showers was experienced over most parts of the country today. Now to the west, it was cloudy and very humid. Occasional rain and thunderstorms uh, were experienced late in the evening. Eastwards from Pacific Harbour to Suva, it was mostly cloudy and cool conditions with rain affecting from late afternoon. And up north, it was mostly cloudy as well. A chance of showers are expected late at night. At sea, moderate, to east, moderate east to southeast winds fresh at times, winds turning east to northeast from later today. Moderate to rough seas are forecast. For the tides, low tide will be at 1.02 a.m. with high tide at 7.09 tomorrow morning. You can expect sunrise to be at 6.03 a.m. Now for tomorrow, occasional showers with isolated thunderstorms and heavy falls are expected over most places. The showers can become frequent over most places as well. And as we look further on to Monday, rain is expected in all major centres. Recapping the main stories, Fijians in Australia told about investment opportunities. Trade tensions could affect the Fijian economy. And FRA explains proposed work on Queen Elizabeth Drive. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question segment, and this week we're asking, should there be harsher penalties imposed on bogus real estate agents? You can visit our FBC website to answer. But do send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via our Facebook page, FB News, FBC News, and you can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC News or hashtag FBC News. And that was your FBC News for tonight. Until next time, good night.
Nathan Gomeria, Maramani Waya Manatuya Sawa, waiting to put in the Nandi, Yao Domarata, Canavaro, and a radio figure. They are Asna the Tilly, our Mara Monica. Don't the Barro Valle, when I don't my bit till Ambassa. Bula, Nathan Goa Prosan Garce, Goer Craki, the Televion of Barro and a radio figure, not to me bit. Then I don't go to Nubuka, Omoni Namus. Radio Fiji One, Nando Mevitiso. Radio Fiji One, Nando